What's it like to leave a P&O cruise ship and head home? I'll take you from leaving your case outside your door the night before to departing the Azura, boarding a transfer bus, getting through the airport, chilling in an airport lounge, a spectacular takeoff from Malta, a gloomy return, and the eternal question, has my case made it too? And so, like all good things, my cruise was coming to an end. The journey home with p &O starts with an envelope by your door the night before departure. In the envelope, the traditional airline tag for your whole case, a colour tag to help the P&O crew get your bag off the ship, and also details of what to do with the tags and what would happen on your journey home. I first tried to add the orange P&O tag to the bag. Now this, in truth, is not so easy whilst filming with your other hand. Do, 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 do. So here is the finished article. Next up, I had to get my bag outside my cabin door by a set time. At this stage, my travel paranoia set in. Had I done everything right? Would I see my bag at the end of my flight? Only time would tell. In the morning, you have to be out of your room quite early, so you've time to kill. First, breakfast, then the bar. And finally, the best time killer there is, the Big Bang Theory. Bazinga. Then, at another set time, details of which you'll see in the information in your envelope the night before, it's off to the Meridian restaurant on deck five. Everything whilst done with a smile is very regimented, but with so many people to move, it's understandable. Uh, so once again, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have all your belongings, make sure you've got your cruise cards on ready to scan as well. And uh, if you do leave any belongings with you, uh, they will be up on eBay tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> After a brief wait, it's down to deck four and off the ship. You get to check out from the Azura one final time. Then it's time to board your transit bus, parked amongst the many that are waiting. Final lingering look at the Azura, it's time to head to the airport. As we take in the 20 minute journey across Malta to the airport, if this video is proving beneficial, I'd appreciate your help with the channel by liking this video and subscribing as well. On the drive into the airport, you can see plenty of P&O staff waiting to help you in their blue tops. As you can see, the walk from the bus to the terminal is not exactly the longest. From here and straight to the left, please. An advantage of sorting your bag the night before is you can go straight through to airside. To get to security, you head up a level. Like any other airport these days, I'm afraid you have to brave duty free to get through to your flight. With the terminal very busy, I decided to use my priority pass to get to the airport lounge. And what a reward. A chilled place with these great views. 
and included the chance to see aircraft coming into land. But it was soon back to the queues for passport control. Thank you. After a five minute wait, we got to board the bus for the plane. Ever seen a speeded up U-turn by a bus at an airport? Our plane, already delayed on arrival, waited another 30 minutes before the off. We all know Malta is a small speck in the middle of the Mediterranean, but the takeoff kind of confirmed it. The blue water of the Mediterranean eventually gave way to the parched earth of the south of France. The further north we headed, the more the weather closed in. In fact, it was only shortly before we landed that we got to see the green fields of southern England. taxied across Gatwick Airport and drew up to the gate, two things were in my mind. The long drive home and has my bag completed the journey as well. I'm one of those people whose case has not completed the trip, but I must have done something right this time, as here it is. If you'd like to see more videos of my time aboard the Azura, a link to a playlist of videos is on the screen now. Sorry.